Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us today for the IoT for Good and Helium Dev Kit webinar with Helium. Uh, so we have Travis Teague here from Helium. He'll be giving you an overview of the IoT for Good contest on Hackster. Uh, he'll be introducing the features and capabilities of the Helium Dev Kit and giving you some examples of applications and use cases for the hardware to get you started creating your IoT for Good projects. Uh, Travis is the developer growth lead at Helium. He helps the community and companies to build IoT applications on the Helium network, and he's involved in both the Alexa and Google Home Developer Slack communities. He also runs the Hackster Houston meetup, and when he's not tinkering and helping developer communities, you can find Travis enjoying long walks on the beach. This webinar will last an hour, and there will be live Q&A. So uh, we'll have like the last 15 to 20 minutes where you can kind of get your questions answered. If you do have questions throughout the event, uh, you'll see at the very bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A little uh, clickable icon and you can click that and you can type in your questions there. So we'll see those throughout the event and we'll try to get those answered at the very end. Um, if we don't get all your questions answered, there is um, a Helium Community Slack channel, which will be a really good resource for you. Um, and there is a section on there that you can have specifically a channel for the contest but also channels that you can just get more help with the dev kit and everything like that. So um, we'll post that link in the chat too. So if for some reason you have to take off early or if you have other questions after this event, uh, you can just go there and get some help there. So uh, thanks for joining us. I'm gonna let Travis take over and uh, get started introducing this contest. Hey, Travis. Hey folks, um, uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the great introduction there. Um, I'm uh, happy that everyone was able to join us for this event today. You know, thank you for your time. Uh, I wanna give you a little bit of background about Helium and what we're doing and the contest. But uh, first off, hey, uh, my name is Travis. Uh, a lot of you folks know me from, uh, I guess, the Helium Hacks Happy Hour, or which we do every Wednesday. But um, I work with developer growth over at Helium Systems. And we put this contest together with ARM, uh, Semtech, ST Microelectronics and these partners have been kind enough to donate developer boards and cash money for prizes. So we've shipped out over 75 of these Helium developer kits for uh, contest, contest entrants who have put together or had you know a pitch for an idea that they wanted to they wanted to build on the Helium network. So um, all of those should be shipped out, and I've talked to a lot of you who have those in hand now. And I'm excited to see what, uh, what, you know, what kind of projects come out of this. So a uh, little bit of a background. Um, Helium is the world's first peer-to-peer -peer wireless network that provides a secure mechanism for IoT devices to talk to the cloud effectively. So, so uh, you know, you have a device and, which can run on a microcontroller, which is very low power, which is, which is, uh, running off of a coin cell battery for years, right? And you have an encrypted conduit that can bring that data out into the cloud. I mean, this could be AWS, this could be Azure, this could be, you know, IBM Bluemix, uh, you know, it, or, or this could be your own solution. And um, it allows you to bring that data from an end device into a dashboard to show it to an end user, right? Um, our, our technology, all, all of our core technology is completely open source. And uh, it's a decentralized network and built on top of a blockchain. And um, what this allows you to do is if we are the network, this is the people's network. This allows you to run a hotspot and not only be part of this network, but earn cryptocurrency by both relaying data from these IoT devices we were talking about, and for providing uh, proof of coverage of, of the network itself. And that means that, so it, it, we've only been in existence since this past August, as far as live, you know, in the field. And we're in all 50 states, 
we have just recently moved in into Europe. We're in Canada, and this is the fastest growing network that I, I believe has ever existed on Earth. And I, I'm very, very pleased to have everyone be every everyone here be a part of this network. It's it's just fantastic. Um, what we're using, we use uh, LoRaWAN, which is a very low power, um, uh, low bandwidth as well. And so we're talking what, what 50 kilobits per second. And so th this is for sensors. We're, we're not doing video here. We're not doing we're not doing audio. We're not streaming Netflix, right? But this is how you can have very very low inexpensive sensors in the field that have range have i mean miles miles of range on these guys and um, the use cases are are all over the board i mean we're talking about agriculture i mean we're talking about um we we have a secure mechanism for our air quality sensors for agriculture for um you know sensors in the field that we can harden these things and uh, have a very low uh, cost entry. Uh, we have a console that is completely free to use that um, I encourage everyone here to please, please get an account. Go to, go to uh, console.helium.com, grab an account and, um, and get started here. It allows you to see all of the data, you know, flowing through from these devices it allows you to add integrations and labels. And we have a number of integrations that work straight out of the box. And so if you, uh, you know, for example, if you use AWS, uh, their free tier, you can, you can get going with AWS IoT Core and have your data pushed through and, uh, and, and displayed through the system in under five minutes it, it, it's ridiculously simple and so you know i'm assuming everyone here is you know you're, you're here because you're working on this contest and you're designing a solution for iot for good what we're trying to do here is um is help the world out you know uh we're, we're trying to do something that uh, that helps society uh, using IoT and using the Helium network. And um, this is something I, I, I feel is very important. I feel that Helium is the absolutely best answer uh, for, for, for a lot of problems here. You know, I mean, we're talking about uh, food production in, in third world countries. We're talking about, like, like I mentioned, um, air pollution, you know, sensors that you may deploy uh, around a city. Right. Um, this is something that, that needs to get out there and it can't be done uh, with, with, with the previous method, which is everyone using SIM cards and everyone using cellular. And, you know, because you get hit with the high data rates. I mean, just, you know, this messiness that we've seen for years and years. And uh, we have a calculator over. If you go to helium.com, uh, uh, forward slash business, we have a calculator that allows you to say, okay, um, I've got a hundred devices that I'm going to roll out into the field, right? And um, I, I want to know what my cost is going to be uh, depending upon, you know, what, what rate I'm going to, I'm going to be sending my, uh, my data through it. And it's ridiculously low. It's ridiculously low. Um, so, so play around with that. And uh, if you have like an existing uh, project or IOT project or industrial IOT project, uh, run through that calculator. And I, I, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by, uh, by the numbers you see there. Okay, console, here we go. Uh, what the console allows you to do is add devices and, into an organization and I can tag these with labels. And so it makes, me, it, makes it very easy to organize uh, these devices into, in, into different groups. I can give different levels of permission uh, to users within an organization. And if you look on the left over here, we have, uh, for example, like Cayenne integration. What this is, 
This allows you to use uh, My Devices and, and Cayenne to put a, a concept up within an afternoon. I mean, I mean, if I want to do a GPS, like tracking application with maps and, you know, bells and whistles and have, have nice little charts, um, I, I, I can do that in the span of an afternoon uh, using the Helium console and the integrations that we have available here. Um, it, it, like I say, if you don't have an account, this is the, the number one, this is what you have to start with. Sign up for console. Um, if you have questions, please hit me up. Uh, I'm pretty easily found on our community Slack. And um, I, I, I think you're going to be very, very happy with what Helium has done here. We have an insider program. Uh, what this is, this is cool. Uh, if you want to be a part of Helium and you want to, you know, get some, some inside information, if you want to help, uh, you know, spread the word about Helium and you want to educate folks uh, locally, uh, we have a program set up that allows you to uh, do exactly that. We'll give you t-shirts. We'll buy you food. <laughs> we'll, uh, um, we'll, we'll put you into some private channels that allow you to kind of have access to a lot of the, the core people who really write the code over Helium. And, um, we want to work with you, you know, we, we want to, we truly believe in the people's network and we, we want you to be a part of this. Uh, here's a number of links. We have been uh, pouring, pouring a lot of time into Helium documentation. If you go to, over to developer.helium.com, uh, if, if you haven't looked at it recently, please revisit it. Uh, we've we put a lot of time in over here, and uh, there's there's some great information. We have uh, Docker containers, so you can run you can run miners on AWS. You can run miners on a Raspberry Pi. You can uh, you, you you can run miners anywhere that supports Docker. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. Um, if you want to look at our code. Go to GitHub. Um, we, we have um, a ton of, of repos over there and uh, absolutely support, um, you know, pull requests. If you want to, uh, if you want to add on to something, if you want to change, if you want, we, we, we welcome feedback. Uh, we, we want to know what the community thinks about how we're building this network. And, uh, I think that's the, um, well, aside from the, okay, the community Slack, you can sign up at chat.helium.com and there are a number of channels there. So please, once you sign up over on the left, um, you know, click the little plus above, above um, or, or click on channels and make sure that you've kind of looked through everything. We have an, an antennas channel where, uh, you know, we, we talk about, uh, you know, how to maximize your, your coverage uh, using, um, you know, and third party antennas. And uh, it's, it's very active. There's a, a, a lot of very knowledgeable people over there, over there. So um, I, I, I encourage you to check these out. I, I see a question has come in here. Is this something I, I can address here? Yeah, you can go ahead. I was going to ask you at the end, but if you have time to address it now, that's great. Yeah, I, I, because I really want to want to hit, um, you know, any questions or any issues that people have, uh, you know, with the contest, you know, it, any participant that's having an issue here. So you have uh, David Groom. Uh, hey, um, can we un unmute David? Uh, sure. Yeah. Let me cool. let me go ahead and do that for you. Perfect. Thank you. David, if you'd like to, you can unmute yourself and chat. Ah, I've unmuted myself. Um, should I repeat my question? That'd be great. Um, perfect. Uh, yeah, so I um, have played around with the hardware. Uh, thank you for the hardware, first of all. Um, but I haven't been able to connect to connect. Um, and there are three hotspots in my area. Um, the closest one is about uh, two miles away, which I thought was uh, 
sufficiently um, close to be able to connect. But um, with the example card, I've just not been able to connect and uh, there's not really any, you know, signal strength or any kind of like information I can really use to be able to sort of uh, divine my way towards the source and see if I can connect if I move closer or something like that. And I just wondered like, what is the strategy for for connecting um, when you're having that that issue? Uh, okay, uh, cool. Uh, David, do you, do you mind if I ask where you're located? Are you in the U.S. or? Uh, I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay, okay. So um, as far as the distance, that's that's kind of a tricky a, a tricky question because w w whenever you're dealing with radios, I mean, literally, you can hit a satellite use, using this equipment, right? But um, but because of interference and a number a number of other issues, um, you may not even be able to go to two and a half miles, right? And so, uh, without having a hotspot of your own, um, it's it, it can be difficult. I mean, you know where these hotspots are available at, right? I, I mean, I mean, you say you have three in your in your area. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, I looked up on the map, um, you know, before even applying yeah. to the contest, just to make sure. Um, and I, my recollection was sort of, um, you should make sure that there's hot, there's a hotspot within 10 miles or something like that. I can't remember what exact language was, but whatever it said, I, I, I checked before I even applied and I was like, oh, wow, there's three around here. I should be all set. Um, but then once it arrived, I've just, uh, I've just been having difficulty and, you know, I don't mind like, getting in a car and driving towards one or something, but also it would be helpful if I could be getting some kind of feedback while I'm doing that and seeing like, oh, the signal's stronger, the signal's strong. Oh, it's getting weaker, it's getting weaker, you know, so you can at least kind of um, okay. diagnose and, and figure out what's going on. But I don't know if there's any example code for that because the code that exists right now that I've seen for the Arduino um, IDE is just sort of, it's connecting, it's, re it's trying again, it's trying again, it doesn't give you any kind of like signal strength or whatever the other useful information might be. In, in trying to figure out what the deal is. Yeah, and you, you can do that and you can request acknowledgements uh, from the network. And so you can get uh, both RSSI and uh, signal to noise ratio uh, numbers being pushed back down as downlinks uh, to the device. Uh, I, I, I don't want to promote, you know, uh, stalking, uh, <laughs> you know, people, but uh, but it it is something that we've been working on rather extensively recently on uh, being able to uh, build field test devices. And so you, you can have both the server component that allows you to have access to, you know, a, a lot of information uh, when you're war driving, for example, right? Is, is there any example code um, that, that allows you to get that signal strength uh, for the Arduino? ID because uh, I looked through most of the examples and and all of them seem to you know prior to connection um, there really wasn't much uh, other than just like you know a join function that was failing um, so where can I find that how, how can I how can I obtain that those numbers for signal strength and things like that uh, are are you on the the community Slack uh, yeah and uh, you'd actually sent me something on there but. The thing that you sent me, I couldn't actually view it. The permissions were wrong or something. Oh, uh, on Git Guru. I, I'm assuming it's what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that should be updated and you should be able to see that at this point. But, okay. uh, you know, uh, double check that. If, if there's still a problem, please hit me up. Uh, that, uh, this is something that, I mean, is very important. And one of the biggest issues that, you know, we have is uh, when people don't have hotspots. So, um, if, if you have a hotspot, I mean, you can do a DIY hotspot. I mean, it's something that if you want to build one on your own, uh, that's absolutely doable and makes it, uh, makes it a lot easier because you kind of have guaranteed coverage there, right? Yeah, so uh, that was my next question is if there, I don't want to take over the whole webinar <laughs> for my- No, 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 no. But I, I was curious if there's a way to simulate it or to otherwise get around the lack of real hotspot. Um, I mean, if, if, you, if you DIY one, you still need some kind of other hardware, I assume, which would be unlikely to be procurable for the contest timeline, I'm guessing. Um, you do need, yes, you do need a LoRaWAN or, or a LoRa concentrator, uh, which is like an eight channel radio that, uh, that 
a Raspberry Pi is able to interface with. And so as far as timeline, I, I understand with shipping dates uh, being kind of all askew nowadays, um, it, it, it may uh, kind of hurt the timeline. But that's one thing, and I'm very glad you brought this up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be extending the timeline of this contest for one month. Uh, to allow for, you know, you know, shipping, other delays, you know, other issues that, uh, that have happened with some of the shipping. And some of this was on our end. Some of it, some of it was um, being held up in customs in, in India, for example. And so, um, you know, anyone who, we don't want it to be unfairly, you know, d disadvantaging people because, uh, you know, customs held up your development board, right? So we're going to go ahead and extend that. Um, I'll, I'll get the uh, the site over at Hacks.io updated uh, shortly. But uh, you know, please spread the word and understand that uh, that's something that we're, we are pushing this out. So. Great. Thanks, David. Thank you for um, answering my question. Yeah. Uh, so Travis, do you want to keep going, or do you want to ask answer more questions? Let's. If we have more questions, I, I, I mean, I'd love to, I, I'd love to hear from the community and Great. I, you know, let, let me know what's going on here. And yeah. Uh, so we have a couple different people who I think are, are in India. And so they are asking more about kind of the a hotspot and networks in their area and, and what to do um, if there are no hotspots and if they can still build something using the dev kits or, or how that might. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I, I'll tell you what, if you don't mind, if there's any way that we can bring uh, Chris Meyer in um, on voice. Yeah, let me, I think I see him right here. So let me change him and allow him to talk here. And I'm going to, oh, hi, Chris. I've got, I've got my, uh, my 18 month old here saying hello. <laughs> what's, what's, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Travis? How you doing, man? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. But um, I, uh, thanks for joining us uh, today, for one. And uh, also, some folks are asking how they can, if they're outside of the U.S. and they don't have coverage, what do they do? Yeah, so that's what I, I just threw it in the chat there. Um, so we've got uh, our project for the hackathon is called Hardshare, which basically opens up a, a sandbox with the ST micro uh, discovery board with the, you know, what is it? I K whatever sensor package um, that is, is within range of a hotspot. So if you, if you check out those two links that I put in there, or if you're in the Hackster um, project, I posted a few links there as well, but basically you can click one of those links. You you're opened up to an IDE that then you can paste your code and deploy to the board. And as long as you use your app EUI, dev EUI, and app keys, what you'll see is the data traverse the network, um, you know, as if you had the board right there with the the hotspot within range. But it's legitimately going over the network. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So what what uh, what this basically enables you is you can you can do all of your um, infrastructure setup to where you know you can just copy and paste that code onto the board when you get it and it, it'll work exactly the same and that works so, with with what integrations i mean if i if i want to be talking to cayenne or or aws yeah. or yeah 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 so exactly so in, in, in travis you can speak to this a lot better than i can but you can set up everything uh in the helium console you can you know set up your aws or cayenne uh your my qt whatever it's called um my cayenne uh, as a place to, to see the data traverse the network, but it's, it's pretty slick. I think. And then, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it, it's very cool. And so what he's talking about is the data will actually be going through, I don't know if you can still see my screen, but um, it will yep. be going through this, uh, this console right here, right? And so uh, you sign up right here, console.helium.com, and then can use this what, right, third party uh, access and see the data. Basically, you borrow a board is, is, is how this works. Yep. It's, uh, it's literally sharing hardware. So um, <laughs> hard share. Get it? It's pretty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, um, but yeah, so if, if anybody uh, needs some help or wants access, please just shoot me, uh, shoot me a message on the Hackster.io discussions. Um, and then I'm happy to, to get you set up. If you need more time right now, it defaults to 15 minute sessions. But we're, we're hoping to get some more boards up on there uh, soon. So if there's, if there's demand, we can figure that stuff out. Very cool, man. Chris, th uh, thank you for, very much for joining us here. Um, yeah. I, I, I really uh, appreciate it, man. And, I, I have uh, to say I've had, a, I've had an absolute blast bringing up a variety of devices to, on the Helium network. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm excited to share that with other people um, you know, as, we, as we all grow together, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, it's a people's network, man. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, 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 thanks. And, and the Helium network is, I mean, honestly, and, and, and this is just me as Travis speaking here, but it's, it's the best IOT solution that, that I've seen that, that we have out there. It's, um, it, it's really incredible what's going on. The people behind uh, this company uh, are just are maniacs uh, with the rate that they, that they iterate these solutions. And um, I really want to see more developers embrace this and, you know, get, get on board here because I, I, I think it's an incredible solution. I, I think it's a network that, you know, is the people's network and it's something that you own, that you're, that you get paid to run, you know? Um, and uh, I, I want to see more people uh, be a part of this. So uh, very cool. And, and Chris, th uh, you know, thanks again. Uh, that project is, is cool as hell, and um, it makes it easy. So if someone is in India, for example, or Indonesia, or um, you know a country where they may not have coverage, then they can borrow a board, and um, you know the, you know they can do their development straight via a browser. So cool, man. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's been a blast. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna post a little thing here with my email address. So if anybody needs it. Um, just shoot me a message. Thanks, bud. Yep. Thanks, Travis. Awesome. We have a lot more questions that came in during that discussion. So uh, let me let me kind of go through them. So um, one of them was, are you thinking about considering a hotspot on 2.5 gigahertz, which are which would be country independent? Uh, not at this point. Uh, just to expand on that, just a bit on on 2.5. Uh, jigs. Uh, I, I understand what you're talking about and you know I follow you here but um, there are some disadvantages by going to 2.5 jig and part of that is you know having the the lower megahertz range gives you better uh, penetration with like concrete steel buildings and um, and construction materials and in a lot of countries that's that's kind of a priority um, in order to be able to get, you know, punch out and coverage. I, I just wanted to add that on there. So. Great. Thank you. Um, then we have some, someone who was asking about cryptocurrency. Uh, do you know how that works on a hotspot? Um, the, this user was thinking it would recover uh, the cost for the hotspot if he buys one, if he's using cryptocurrency on hotspot. I, Okay, um, and, and, and it's a very good, very good question. I can't speak to it directly, but, but let me explain. Um, yes, you earn cryptocurrency by um, doing proof of coverage on the network and by relaying uh, data across your hotspot by, by allowing, you know, you can't see any of this data. I mean, it's all encrypted, but it, you're relaying the data and you, get, you earn tokens for that. Um, I, I, I can't, I, I can't speak as far as, you know, are, you know, are, are you going to become a millionaire? But, <laughs> um, but yes, that's, that's how the system works. You, um, you earn cryptocurrency by relaying data and by providing proof of coverage on the network. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for that. There were some questions actually that came in on the chat that I was trying to find again um, about Raspberry Pi. Um, let me see. Can I use the STM LoRaWAN hardware as radio receiver for a DIY Raspberry Pi instead of buying a Raspberry Pi? LoRaWAN can. No. 
No, you you really can't do that because what you what you want to do you you need to be set up with an H channel uh, Laura concentrator, um, and that's that's kind of the the low end of the spec is to have eight channels and that's eight that's eight uplink channels, and then you have one downlink and so no you 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 can't use those STM boards for that. Okay. Ferris, okay, I see your question. Okay, Great. hold on, okay. <laughs> um, the main difference between, if you don't mind if I grab this, the main yeah. difference between heli Helium and the Things Network, and, and thank you very much for joining us, man. It's, um, it, it's good to have you uh, a part of this. Um, I, I know that you go way back with, with TTN, as do I, and uh, the main difference is we a we exist in the U.S., <laughs> um, which unfortunately TTN and and I tried very hard to get TTN, you know you know built out and I, I live down in in Houston Texas, and I tried very hard to get TTN built up down here, and it just it didn't happen. We didn't get the coverage. We didn't we didn't get the buy-in from folks, you know, and what Helium has done in you know since this past August is we're in every, you know, every one of the 50 states. Uh, we have thousands and thousands of hotspots all over the place. We have coverage. And so the difference is um, it works. It exists in, in the United States. Uh, we're, we're moving out. We just expanded out, you know, into Europe. We have, uh, pre, you know, pre-orders right now in, in Asia. So, uh, I, that's, I mean, I, I can go on and on, but I, I think that's the very simple answer. Uh, there was one other question in the chat. I just want to make sure I catch it before it, it disappears from me, <laughs> since there's a lot going yeah. on in the chat. But um, somebody was asking about the dev kits uh, for this specific contest. Are, do they have to use the dev kit, or are they able to use their own setup for the contest? They can use whatever setup they want. Um, and it, it anything, any... LoRaWAN uh, capable device is is usable on the Helium network, and so you can use literally hundreds and hundreds of off-the-shelf third-party devices um, to you know to get a solution up. And so on this contest, the solution doesn't have to be going out there and writing your own custom firmware on the Helium development kit. I mean, you you can put whatever device you want on the network. And it's, it's more about the idea that, you know, that is behind this. You, you don't have to use the Helium uh, dev kit. If you would like a Helium dev kit, then drop in, um, actually, <laughs> um, every Wednesday night on Helium Hacks Happy Hour and pitch an idea and I'll, I'll overnight you aboard. So um, it, it, it's a very easy way to get a Helium developer kit, and those are the ST uh, microelectronics boards, which uh, they were kind enough to have uh, donated us uh, quite a number of them. Uh, we, we've sent out what, well over 75 of them for this contest, and uh, you know, hopefully, everyone has those in their hands now. And they're great boards; they're 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 easy to work with, and um, y y you know, hopefully. Uh, People, folks aren't having problems with them, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, you can use whatever you want. You can use TTGOs. Uh, TTGO makes some great little, I've got some around here somewhere, uh, little boards with OLEDs on them. And, you know, you, you can get these little uh, boards for, uh, what, $11, $12. And they have a, a LoRa radio on them. They have an OLED uh, display, and uh, it, we have examples. We have and tutorials on our website on how to program those guys. So um, no, absolutely, you're not you're not limited just to the the ST micro dev kits, but um, but they're nice, you know, and that's why we use them because uh, they're they make quality products. And, um, you know, we, we really do um, promote them, I guess. So. Great. 
Uh, one other question we had about uh, gateways. Can we use an, any existing gateway to make a helium hotspot? Um, and they suggested like Dragino, which I've not heard of. But. Dragino is awesome. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Dragino. Um, now, but the question I, I, I'm assuming is talking about their single channel gateways. And Helium doesn't currently support single channel gateways. Um, LoRaWAN spec is um, eight channels and uh, single channel gateways, which if, if, if they can clarify the question, um, I can give a more definitive answer. But, um, but if it's the single channel Dragino gateway, uh, we, we currently don't support single channels. But all, all of their all of their sensors and, and whatnot. I, I, I'm a big fan of Dragino. Um, are rack gateways the only ones which are usable? No, uh, Rack is a, a great company, and they make very uh, low cost eight channel concentrator modules that can be used uh, very simply with uh, Raspberry Pi devices. And we have tutorials for those on our website. If you go to developer.helium.com. Um, uh, we, we've got a ton of documentation there and, um, and, and more to come, but, um, you know, you know, please, please jump in there, jump in the helium community slack and hit me up if you have any questions on any of this. How tags work. Um, yes. How tags work. Uh, what tags, if anyone hasn't seen our recent press releases, what tags are, they are GPS tracker units that are available to purchase by anyone who has bought a Helium hotspot. And Helium will pay for the, the data on these tags for the life of the product. And so you, you don't have to spend your own data credits in order to push data across the network, uh, Helium picks up the bill effectively for those. And so they're, um, they're yeah, they're like low jack devices. They're, they're GBS trackers. Okay, looking down our list here. Uh, um, I, I, I see there's a lot of uh, folks in India and I, I'm very, very excited to have India be a big part of the Helium network. That's something that, uh, you know, I saw so many entries uh, coming through from India and, you know, tried to get dev kits out there as soon as I could. Apologies, because I know, uh, you know, some of you folks had issues with those getting caught up in customs. I've, I, I've tried to, um, you know, to get tracking numbers out to everyone and, you know, make sure that we get those into your hands. But uh, yes, it, it, okay. Um, if you want to be a part of the, the community here, then uh, we'd love to have you uh, be a part of it. Uh, we just uh, recently, if, if you go over to, let me see here. Our insider program. Um, uh, this is something that we use and have kind of kind of relaunched in order to get people who are not just necessarily uh, developers, right? Uh, we we want to get people involved who just want to talk about the Helium network, who want, who want to, you know, be involved with uh, teaching people about this. And it's something that uh, Helium Systems is set up to help out uh, folks who want to help us out here. So uh, this, this might be, um, you know, a method to go forward here. Otherwise, um, hit me up. Uh, with any questions about the insider program and I, I, I would love to have you on board um, especially if you're um, in India and I know that coverage is something that because we don't um, officially support India at this point uh, there there's a couple of uh, jump through hoops issues there but that's something that um, I, I would love to chat with you about and and uh, and bring you on board great uh, we did get a little bit more confirmation about that gateway that question that we had earlier. Um, so the gateway he was talking about was um, the LoRaWAN gateway from the Things Network. Um, and was wondering if that was compatible. Um, is it the indoor gateway? Yes. 
uh, uh, I'm afraid that's um, that's that's not compatible. No. Okay. Uh, Although were... um, a, a number, a large number of other gateways, uh, such as the Laird Centrius gateways, are absolutely c compatible uh, with the Helium network, and so um, it, it, it's something that. Most gateways, yes. The the Things Network indoor gateway, uh, sadly, yeah, we, we can't steal those over to our network. So. <laughs> All right, great, thanks. Uh, there was another question at the very beginning that we kind of we missed. I think um, that was about the difference between a couple of different hardware, um, the Disco LoRaWAN one and the STM three two L zero. Yeah, I'm pulling this up here. No problem. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd have to Google it. I, uh, I mean, I could Google it, I guess, but um, I, I, I really, I really don't think there is a difference. It's a good question. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. Okay, I think that we've covered most of them. Um, uh, you know, just some other questions about the gateways and. Um, there's one about gateways in Africa um, or hotspots in Africa. Yes, and that's something that um, we're, uh, th there are so many good, uh, especially agricultural uh, use cases in South Africa that, uh, and we, we have a partnership with the open initiative that uh, we're working with for, uh, you know, growing food and, and you know, increasing um, ag agricultural, um, uh, you know, projects out there. So um, is there a specific question? Or? I think he was just wondering uh, if there was anything specific for Africa for the Helium Network and um, just, he's just trying to learn more about it. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'd, I'd love to speak with you um, on this. Um, Oleg Binga, is, is that where the question came from? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm, uh, please hit me up uh, privately at, after the, afterwards, but uh, we have some projects going on in South Africa, in Liberia, in Kenya, in the Congo, uh, I, I, mostly agricultural but I would absolutely love to chat with you, um, you know, regarding those, so. Um, is there any way, if we just, let's see, what time do we have right now? We, uh, We're at, uh, we got 15 minutes left. Okay, so, um, you know, whatever questions we have, if anyone wants to, um, you know, wants to uh, jump on, I don't have a problem with unmuting mics and, um, you know, if you have any questions about the contest specifically, and, uh, you know, if, if you have any problems with, uh, you know, with contest entries, with what's going on, uh, with, um, with coverage, which I know is kind of a problem here, um, I, I see in some of these questions, but um, I'd, I'd love to chat um, and, and make myself available for about 15 here. Uh, if, if someone does want to do that, you can just raise your hand. There's a little raised hand icon um, on the, the side there, and then I can um, unmute you. You can ask your question. Okay, so I see one here. So I'm going to unmute Ujval. Hey. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So I had a, just one question that is there an Arduino library for uh, Helium? Um, An Arduino library? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, there, there are Arduino libraries. Uh, I, actually, there are um, there are a couple of different libraries that mm -hmm. uh, for LMIC that you can use uh, on the Helium network. Um, and if if you actually go to developer.helium.com, and uh, we have a number of tutorials there that should link uh, directly to the to the Arduino libraries. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, anyone else? Oh, we got another one. Ahmed, I'm going to let you talk. Let me, uh, there we go. Ahmed, you're, you can unmute yourself. Hello. 
Hello. Yeah. Oh. Uh, my name is Ahmad. Uh, I'm based in Indonesia, and there is no LoRaWAN network coverage uh, here. And I want to ask uh, what kind uh, of the gateway compatible with uh, DevKit Helium LoRaWAN if I want to build uh, the gateway network uh, connected to the Helium dashboard. Um, the way I, I would recommend going forward is uh, if you go to developer.helium.com, we have, um, a, and then over on the left on build your own DIY uh, hotspot, uh, effectively what you have to do is uh, set up your country codes for the radio and build this, I, I would recommend building this around a, a Raspberry Pi and a rack, um, a rack wireless concentrator. Is it uh, compatible with uh, LoRaWAN indoor uh, LoRaWAN gateway from Things Network? Um, the indoor gateways from Things Network are not um, are not compatible with with the Helium network. No, they don't they don't allow you to um, to re repurpose those. Okay, thank you very much for your yes. absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Ahmed. Thank you, welcome. Okay, then we have uh, Rootvik. So I'm gonna let Rootvik uh, join here. Hi Rootvik. Hello, so my question is, uh, I, uh, me and my team, uh, basically I'm from India, me and my team, uh, we are uh, interested to uh, build a big uh, Helium network in the India. Uh, currently, uh, we uh, wanted to start it, uh, the Helium uh, network into the uh, at my uh, university place. So he, uh, at there, we have uh, lots of uh, uh, real-time problems which we can solve to the uh, to the uh, using the LoRaWAN. So we are uh, came up with the, uh, your idea, which is which is Helium uh, hotspot. So uh, we have wanted to know that. Uh, we basically want to make a, a big, a large coverage network, uh, which is based on uh, outdoor, outdoor networks, and uh, more uh, devices which we can connect with the Helium hotspot. Or uh, not only Helium hotspot, or we can uh, build our own hotspot, which can cover more, more, uh, more area in uh, our uh, town. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And uh, by doing uh, DIY hotspots and using third-party antennas and you know uh, elevated antenna locations, you can you can absolutely boost the range that um, that a hotspot can cover uh, with with the Helium network. Yeah. Uh, okay. is, uh, do you have a specific question or? No, no. But the main thing is that in India, we have a uh, 860 FITO, uh, 860 ELT uh, as a uh, free LoRa, uh, LoRa uh, band. So we cannot uh, use any 868 or uh, uh, more than 868. So in that we have only seven channels, so which we can use in, as a commercially. Uh, as a maker or DIY, uh, we can use any one of that channel, but uh, still there is uh, some uh, 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 try regulations are be there. So we need okay. to take care about that particular bands which cannot be affected or which cannot be interfered to any other devices in our India. Right, 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 right. Um, no, no, absolutely. And um, one thing I would like to bring up here, um, there's a project that Jose, uh, a community member of ours has put together. And if you go to uh, a, a website and I'm making get this in chat here, um, th this is uh, x2he.net. Um, this is this is a site that has India support that will allow you to use uh, hotspots uh, within within India to um, to connect with the Helium network. Okay, and also and we are thinking to uh, move over the 2.4 gigahertz, which are uh, any uh, country independent. So if we uh, develop any uh, hotspot into that, so we are morally interested into that. But still, there is uh, some issues uh, regarding to interference with the existing Wi-Fi band. 
so uh, still we have can uh, we can shift uh, on any different channel also hmm. um I, I mean, because obviously it, it, it's crucial that you don't you don't interfere with other devices, um, you know, on on RF uh, bands, and you also need to you know participate in whatever your country uh, allows, because these ISM bands differ between different countries, right? Um, uh, yeah. I, I'd l I'd love to chat with you offline, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a separate channel within the the helium. Uh, community Slack just for India. So um, any, anyone mm -hmm. in India who wants to uh, discuss these issues, uh, you know, please, please jump in there. And, uh, y you know, hope, hopefully we can, uh, we can get th things moving over there. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. Thanks, Rathik. Uh, someone asked about the new deadline. Uh, we're pushing it a month. So um, I guess um, I'll, I'll uh, get get that straight today. Katie, is that cool? Yeah, sounds great. Cool. All right. Um, we did have a couple questions about the uh, the Wednesday night happy hours. Uh, what the link to that is, and um, how you can they can yes, sure that. So absolutely. Uh, go to helium.com/community. Uh, I believe is going to have our community events. And you should be able to sign up. It's a, um, a Zoom meeting that we're using at this point. And uh, let me see if I can pull the link up for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, helium.com uh, forward slash community and uh, scroll down. And on the left there, you should see the, the happy hour link. And you can go ahead and uh, sign up. That's every Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, 5 p.m. Central, and would love to have you drop in and you know talk about your ideas. If you want to win a free board, you know you know pitch an idea, you know talk about something that you want to build on the Helium network, and I will absolutely get that shipped out to you. So great. We've got about four minutes left. I think we've answered most of the questions that came through. Oh, we just got another one from David um, that said, it looks like the eight channel LoRaWAN front ends are about $150. Is there any way to get it a little cheaper? Uh, you can get a, um, a, it's a rack developer board for um, it. And actually it's built around, um, it, it's built around a Raspberry Pi Zero W. And so it's going to be a little different because you can't actually run the minor aspect of it on the device because it's a, a Pi Zero, you know. Um, but those are $120. You want to get a unit that has GPS on it uh, for $120. And then you have to run the minor uh, component in the cloud. And, and we have instructions and Dockerized containers where you can install that onto an AWS instance, an EC2 instance, um, in the cloud and full instructions um, on our developer site. So, awesome. Uh, we had another question asking whether a submission with Chris's hard share service would be valid for the contest, um, since they're not sure that they will have time to get a dev kit. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Uh, absolutely. And, and, and to expand on that, just, just real quick, I know we're right at the end here, but um, uh, I, I want to respect everyone's time, but uh, regarding, you know, can you put a submission in using that service? Yes. And I, I, I would like to also, um, you know, make everyone understand that you don't have to be writing firmware for, for these solutions. We, we want IoT for good. We want, we want the ideas to come out of this, right? And so, um, you know, maybe your skill set is, um, you know, writing applications in the cloud and you don't know much about hardware or you don't know much about, you know, in devices that that shouldn't stop you. Um, jump, jump into our Slack channel. You know, if, if you need to hook up with um, a developer, we have a, we have the IOT for good channel within our community Slack. And, it, you know, if, if you can meet up with some other developers or 
if you just want to do a um, you know a server side uh, solution to this, don't don't let that stop you from um, being a part of this contest. Um, if you have any questions that I can help you out with in any way at all, uh, please let me know. Um, I'm, I, I try to make myself uh, very available. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm TT over on community Slack and uh, hit me up, you know, um, if you're wanting to be a part of this. So. Awesome. I think that's all we have time for today, but I appreciate you joining us and um, yeah, answering all these questions because there are a lot of great questions that came in. So. Well, thank you very much for hosting us. I, I, I sincerely appreciate this and thank you. Thank you everyone for your time today. Yeah.